Multi-spark ignition systems have been around since the 1970s when the concept was created. Generally, this type of ignition system is assigned to performance vehicles, particularly those with capacitor discharge ignition systems that have a very short spark duration. What is a multiple spark ignition system and what's the benefits? Just as the name suggests, multiple spark ignition systems use multiple sparks when normally only one spark would take place. Now we don't generally find multi-spark ignition systems outside of the performance industry, but one exception is behind me. Multi-spark ignition is generally used at idle or up to about 1500 RPM. The benefits include a smoother idle, better cold start conditions, better fuel economy, better emissions, and less vibration within the engine itself. One of the problems associated with multiple spark ignition systems is the fact that multiple sparks are taking place in the time that would normally be associated for just one spark. Another problem that you can have with multiple spark ignition systems is the time restraints that you have. At 1000 RPM, the engine will travel six degrees in just one millisecond. That means that one degree is equal to 0.17 of a millisecond. It's insane. That's why generally it's only done at idle. An ignition coil has to magnetically saturate, doesn't it? And of course that takes time. As a rule, an ignition spark needs to be at least 0.5 to 0.6 of a millisecond. Anything shorter than that and you could end up with a misfire. Other conditions will affect it, of course, such as an, a lean air fuel mixture. If we make the spark duration too long, then that could be affected by valve overlap and could possibly even cause a misfire. At the moment I'm on ignition coil number one and I've back probed the primary voltage going into the coil and I've also got a current clamp set on uh, 20 amps there. So what does the pattern look like? Remember this is the primary side of things. So as mentioned this is a multiple spark discharge system. So there's multiple firings of the ignition coil where normally there would just be the one. In this case you can see three and that's typical of what the BA Falcons do. So let's just stop that and have a look at that in detail. If we have a close look at the waveform we can clearly see that there are three distinct firings. This here is our current as it raises to prime the ignition coil to create that magnetic saturation. This little period of time here is when the ignition coil is actually turned off and then they quickly fire up the coil a second time as you can see here and that brings on our second firing of the primary and that's what you can see there. But notice the ringing of the ignition coil. You can see there's a lot of energy left in the ignition coil right here, isn't there? Then the dwell time starts again. It fires up the ignition coil ready to fire the spark plug again, which it does. But then you can see the energy left in the ignition coil is far less. There's hardly anything left in the tank and therefore the dwell time fires up again and it does a a final firing and over here you can see there's absolutely nothing left in the coil to fire again. That's why they only managed to fire it three times. You can see here the ignition coil is priming up, the current is coming up here on the first one and notice the height of it. We bring down our scale over here on our second, that's about seven amps for our first firing but then there's a time period in between here and here when the ignition coil is actually turned off. We're looking at about 1.5 milliseconds here where the coil is actually priming up again uh, by means of the current rise here. But notice the current is nowhere near as high in the second firing as it was on the first one. The first one was, what's that, 7.7 .7 amps. It drops down to about 5.9 amps. And on its final firing, it's only down to 4.6 amps. So you can see that it doesn't have enough time to fully charge the coil and therefore eventually it just dissipates. Let's have a look at it when we raise the RPM. So you can see the multiple firings there. I'm just gonna bring the RPM up. It's, at the moment it's about 800. So let's bring the RPM up. We're about 1000 RPM there. We keep going. You can see it's already starting to cut out. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. And there we are at 1500 RPM, or a fraction below 1500 RPM and you can see the multiple firings have now disappeared. Um, this is the software that's been written into it and that's just how it is folks. So if we drop it back down they reappear, bring the idle up and it disappears. If we drop the idle back down you can see that they reappear, uh, all three of them, and if we bring the idle up a little bit it, it's back 
it comes back to a single firing of the ignition coil. So I've already shown you how to test uh, power and triggering going to a coil on plug ignition coil but now we want to look at the secondary on the oscilloscope. It makes it a little bit harder because the secondary is buried deep within the cylinder head. We can't really get onto it. You can get an extension piece that goes from the coil itself down to the spark plug head. It's like a spark plug lead that you just put on your normal inductive clamp to pick up your secondary ignition waveform. But in this case, we're going to use what's called an inductive probe or sometimes a magic wand. Let's have a look at the waveform. I'll show you what I'm going to do with this first. So we simply place this straight down there like that, put a bit of pressure on it, and we should get a reasonable sort of reading on the oscilloscope. They are a bit dodgy. They can be hard to get a correct reading, but let's have a look at what we've got with this multi-spark ignition system. That's the waveform that we should expect. You can see that there's three uh, firings at once. Um, so let's once again, this is on the secondary, don't forget. So let's have a look at it in detail. Just like we saw in the primary waveform, we have three individual firings of the ignition coil taken place in that short duration where there would normally just be the one. You can see here that by the ringing of the ignition coil, there's plenty of energy left over for a second firing. So that's what they do. The dwell time is from here to here and it fires a second time or releases the energy in the mutual induction. And there's, as you can see, there's less energy available here for the third firing and of course the thir third firing, there's even less. You can see why most manufacturers don't bother with multiple spark discharge ignition systems, simply because the work involved far outweigh the benefits that it supplies. You can see it's only up to 1500 RPM and then it disappears altogether. Although it's only a software program, it does bring those benefits mentioned before. But as mentioned, most manufacturers don't use it.